Well, today we have one epic head-to-head -head video for you as we look at Condor's new campsite hatchet and Turasaur bushcraft knife and see how they compete against the tried and true S-Wing Sportsman hatchet and Mora Garberg in carbon steel. Well, folks, welcome to another video here at Gideon's Tactical. Thanks for joining me today here in the backcountry, having a blast. But man, is this an intense and exciting head-to-head -head video. And you may be asking yourself, why are you putting these two pairs head-to-head? -head? Why is this, this versus video going on? Why aren't you just looking at these on their own? This Condor combo will run you about $130 for the hatchet and knife together. Same as this S-Wing Mora combo will run you about $130. The difference though, is that this Mora Garberg is gonna be about 80 to $100, whereas the S-Wing hatchet is gonna run you about $35 compared to $85 for the campsite Condor hatchet and about $40 to $45 for the Pterosaur. And I figured that two compact full tang hatchets would be a great head to head. And I wanted to see for myself, would an $85 Condor outperform the $35 S-Wing and would the, we'll call it $45 Pterosaur outperform or compete with we'll call it the $85 Mora Garberg in high carbon. So that's the other aspect as well. Both of these knives are gonna be full tangs with the tang being exposed out the back, both being made out of high carbon steel and having polymer sheaths. So I am just as excited as you are to see how these hatchets and knives compete with each other and how the different prices compete with each other as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. And as we jump into this video, quick two data points for you. The first being that what you see is what you get with the edge geometries. I did not do any reprofiling, any um, regrinding of the hatchets or a resharpening of the knives prior to going out and doing this testing so that you're seeing factory performance, not some special, you know, edge geometry that I'm doing with, you know, six different sharpeners and different things like that. So what you see in this video, guys, is what you get and what I got out of the box with both of these blades and hatchets. And throughout the video, you're gonna see us bouncing back and forth between the two tools. I'm gonna to talk about the blade that's on the knives and then the face and edge on the hatchets. And then we'll talk about the handles on the knives and then the handles on the hatchets. And we're gonna blend and weave it through as we go through this video. So you're not just getting a whole 15 minutes of knife and then 15 minutes of hatchet. So there's a good kind of fun blending that you're about to experience throughout these next several minutes. All right, let's go ahead and hit these knives. Now, both are made with a high carbon steel from all of my research. Again, 1095 on the Mora, they just say carbon, but if you look it up, I believe it's their version of you know 1095 and then 1095 on the Condor. Um, made in El Salvador for the Condor, made in Sweden for the Mora. Now, they've just started using 1095 over at Condor, so uh, I would say that it's good from everything that I can see. I don't know in comparison to, you know, um, tolerances that uh, Mora uses. They're more familiar with carbon or 1095 or their form of carbon seal they're putting on this uh, and have longevity with it. So just things to consider with that, but good, that's 1095, particularly for Condor stepping their game up over their old blades, which used to be mostly 1075, which I wasn't a huge fan of. So with that being said, we're looking at from handle to tip, 4.3 on the Mora, 4.15 on the Condor. So the Condor is just a hair shorter. The Condor is also gonna be a hair thinner at um, 0.3 millimeters or uh, zero point, or excuse me, at three millimeters or 0.12. So an eighth of an inch thick on the Condor. And then the Mora is just gonna be a hair thicker at uh, 3.2 millimeters and having a thickness of 0.13. So just a hair thicker on that. So a little bit bigger overall, and that's gonna weigh into the weight. So thicker stock, obviously, slightly larger palm swell on the handle. And that makes the Mora come in at six ounces, according to my scale and the Condor come in at 4.5 ounces uh, on my scale. So a little bit lighter for the Condor. So that may be a 
you know, selling point for you depends. Uh, the Condor's blade shape is a little bit more precision, whereas the Mora's is just slightly more belly focused. The Mora will have a slightly bigger belly on it, so just something to consider. Both have razor sharp 90 degree spines, so you can scrape, but also throw great um, sparks with. Started a fire with both of these guys, worked great, so I was happy with that. No issues on either of the 90 degree spines that they offer. Full tangs out the back, lanyard hole options. Both have polypropylene handles. So the uh, Mora being fully coated with that carbon steel and then uh, the Condor having a really cool kind of acid-ish wash looks really cool but then uncoated actual cutting edge. So um, possibly a little bit more maintenance on the Condor just because that edge is exposed than on the Mora. So GT family, here's the deal. I tried everything I could to find a difference in the blade performance between the two and they're basically too close to call. In all of the bushcrafty, woodsy things that I could come up with, as well as just cord cutting and all that type of stuff, the edge geometries are very close. And I found it that the Condor, as well as the Mora, perform very well. They do a great job with those Scandi grinds, making all of the woodscraft-based things that you would want to do. Uh, they're basically neck and neck. I mean, I would make you know a notch with the Mora, and then I'd make a notch with the Condor. I'm like, when it comes to the edges, it's really hard for me to tell. I can't, I basically can't tell a difference in the edge geometries. I'm sure there might be micro stuff and somebody out there is going to make a comment, you know, like, well, the, 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 the blah, 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 you know, whatever that in my real world testing, that's my opinion on it. I am not, you know, some scientists would giving you every single, you know, edge angle or whatever. They, they make notches basically exactly the same. They make feather sticks very similarly, similarly. Uh, when you're making a spear, when you're cutting through cordage, they are very, very similar in their performance levels as well as from, I can tell, edge retention capability as well. Tips are strong and durable. Both um, just work and do what a scanty ground four inch, just over four inch blade should do. Both are going to be almost unnoticeable in which one performs uh, better. And want to hit this point as well that, uh, again, I didn't have to reprofile or resharpen the Condor or the Mora. Um, the very sharp uh, out of the box for both of these um, tools, which is great. And I have used the Mora a little bit before and I may have you know tuned it up on Ceramic Rod, but I never reprofiled it or anything like that because I did do a previous review on that Mora uh, about a year ago. But uh, yeah, a good edge off out of the, uh, right out of the gate with that Condor. Uh, but the Mora, I can tell, does have a better fit and finish overall. The lanyard hole is lined up better uh, than on the Pterosaur. The grinding is slightly better uh, when you look at the tips. It's a, the Condor is a slightly off, not, not by much, and for the price, it's not a huge deal. Uh, but you can just kind of, when you look at, look them over, you can tell that there is a better quality control on the Mora than there is on the Condor. But for the price of the Condor, I think you are getting um, a good overall package. And it kind of reminds me of the difference between like a Rat Model 7 and the Rat line from Ontario and like an SE6 and the SE line uh, from SE Knives. You know, they're very, very similar, but you can just tell that the SEs have a little bit better quality control and fit and finish. All right, guys, we're going to jump into the specs, and I believe the model number is the S-Wing E14A Sportsman's Axe is what they call this S-Wing that we're looking at. Again, the smaller of the two. And what we're looking at is an overall weight on the S-Wing of 1 pound 4.4 ounces, and we're looking on the Condor of 1 pound 7.6 ounces. So the Condor is heavier even though it is smaller because the S-Wing comes in from top to bottom at 11.5 inches. And they say the Condor is 11.3, but you can see here, I don't know exactly where they're measuring, maybe from the caps, I guess, from here to here is probably the same, but it's a little longer. And then with the curvature in the tip, it almost comes out to an inch longer. Both have convex grinds. Condor has four and a quarter inches from back to front, and I'll say 4.15 on the S-Wing. All right, so we're gonna do some little measuring here. We have a thickness of 0 0.618, one seven, kind of floating around in there for this little guy. We have a thicker head at 0 0.76 
on the condor. And the transition basically right there at the secondary bevel is 0.1. And trying to be as fair and scientific as I can right there at the exact same where the bevel transitions, uh, 0.18. And finally, right here in the middle, right where kind of the neck begins to transition, I'm gonna clamp up here near the head and give us a reading. Looking at 2.7, 0 0.27, and trying to clamp in about the exact same spot. We're looking at 0 0.43. So something else with the thicker head here, the Condor is gonna have those little traction points and just obviously being thicker, it'll be very easy for you to strike and pommel with. So if you use this a lot, to hammer in tent pegs and stakes and things like that, the Condor will definitely be a better fit for that because of the thinner head and even the slight beveling all around on the S-Wing. It's gonna ricochet off a lot more and you won't get as many good uh, connecting strikes as you would with the Condor. Now these are both carbon steels. The campsite is gonna be made out of Condor's 1075 steel. They have used that a lot, they use it um, for a lot of their tools. So they do a decent job. I've seen other companies do better job with 1090 or 1075, excuse me. Um, the S-Wing I believe comes with 1055 steel. So a slight drop down. They both are very good shock resistant steels. You want that with hatchets. Uh, what I found after the, all of the testing that I did is that they have about the same um, edge performance. They're holding very similar edges, maybe over a long, long period. The Condor might hold its edge slightly longer. They're both very easy to resharpen because of those carbon steels and those shock, you know, kind of low um, rock wells. I think they're in the low 50s for both of them. Uh, on the rock wells to help with the shock resistance. There's a slight burring like in two little spots on the campsite and there's one or two spots kind of up high on the S-wing that also, the est wing, <laughs> that also has just the slightest of burring, but that's it, there's no chipping or rolling. They're holding good edges for a full day of work that I've put these through, not only here in the backyard uh, around the shed, but also out in the back country. And then both the cutting edges being at about 2.75 cutting edge. So what that means, guys, is that the Condor campsite is going to have the thicker, thicker, heavier head overall, and the S-Wing is going to have the thinner, uh, lighter head. Now, what that translates to in actual performance that I saw is that particularly on the splitting, the campsite wins. It's just a better splitter just because of the head geometry, the overall thicker head, obviously, and a little bit more weight. There's more energy in that portion of the hatchet coming down on the pieces of wood. So if you're wanting to use this for a lot of splitting tasks, then the campsite is going to be easily the winner. I definitely had to spend a lot more time and energy with the S-Wing to actually split stuff. Now they both do well and they're both really good hatches for splitting, but uh, in the sense of being, you know, full tang, uh, less than one inch thick, you know, heads, those are things just to consider. Uh, but the, the campsite definitely wins on that side of things. But on the flip side, and we're going to break it down, I'll break it down in just a moment for kind of overall concept. What you will discover is that the S-Wing tends to be more of not only a precision tool, and for you know a one foot 12 inch sized hatchet or even slightly less do you want precision or do you want brute force splitting and chopping capability it's something to consider maybe you do maybe you don't um, but the s-wing will be a slightly more precision tool overall and when it comes to like delimbing uh, the thinner head actually does better with those type of tasks chopping off uh, smaller branches let's say three inches or less um, going through that type of wood because of the thinner blade, you don't have to put as much energy behind it and it bites in more like a knife than it does like a hatchet in that regard, getting, giving you deeper overall strikes than what the Condor will produce. Uh, it's, they're close in, in consideration to the chopping capability, but I feel like the S-Wing might have just a ever so slightly leg up because it, it bites in deeper because of the thinner blade head therefore giving you uh, more material removal with each strike. Now I did see a difference slightly, ever so slightly, in the handle ergonomics. That's really the only place you're gonna see any form of difference in these blades. They both have very similar handle material, polypropylene handle material. Checkering is very similar, all of that. They're exactly the same length at 4.6 uh, inches long, basically, on both of those. They both have the exposed tang out the back. You know, I mean, that, that's all very, very similar uh, in that regard. The thing that I noticed was that the Mora is just an overall kind of fuller 
handle and a little bit thicker handle than what you're going to see on the, the Condor. Now, the Condor actually has a slightly thicker neck up here than on the Mora. The Mora kind of comes in and tapers a little bit more, but the main palm swell is just a little bit larger and it's a little bit thicker from top to bottom than on the Condor. Caliper again, right near the center logo. Looking at 1.16, same thing on the Mora. We're looking at about 1.31. So a little bit thicker there. And then when we look at thickness right there again by the logo, I'm looking at 0 0.79, 0 0.87 on the Mora. So that's what I'm talking about, guys. That's what I'm looking at there. So you that's really what you're going to notice is that the Mora just has an overall slightly fuller handle. So you have to decide, is that something that is beneficial to you or not? I wear large size gloves, as you guys know, and there was, wasn't was really any uh, issue one way or the other. It's nice to have the big full Mora handle. The Condor isn't any less ergonomic or causing any hot spots for me with my usage, regardless of if I was using gloves or barehanded. So I could, I could tell though that the Condor is just a little bit of a more narrow handle. So if you like that or you have smaller hands, you might gravitate a little bit more to the Condor. If you have larger hands or you just like big, thick, kind of fuller handles, the Mora will be slightly larger. So I want to take a brief time out just to thank those regular viewers and subscribers. And if you're not a current subscriber and invite you to become part of the GT family, hit that subscription button, hit that bell icon and become part of what we do here. We're throwing up content every single week, just like this. And we are hitting all kinds of different price points and, you know, options and things like that throughout this video. So I will have a bunch of links for you guys below. Appreciate when you purchase through them, including links particularly over to the Terrasaur or Terrasaur because it hasn't fully hit the market yet. A lot of places still don't have it. I have found, um, I think I picked mine up at Smoky Mountain uh, Knife Company. I think Knife Center now has it, but it's not readily available on Amazon yet or a lot of the other sites that we offer to you. So I'll try and put them below, but as time goes on, I'm sure in a couple more months, you'll see them in all the links that we offer to you. And I also want to thank those of you that support through PayPal. I'll have my PayPal um, profile link below. If you just want to donate five, 10 bucks here and there, when you have the opportunity, we really appreciate it because I went out and purchased all the gear that you're seeing here today so I can give you guys my thoughts, my experience, and help you make a better decision on what tools are best suited for you guys. So I appreciate all the PayPal supporters as well. You guys are epic and awesome, and I want to thank you for that. You help make the content continue to run. Now, as we touch on handle ergonomics, there's some important factors to note. Obviously, leather stacking on the S-Wing and then lacquered. So this has a little bit more of a slick traction than the, I believe it's glass reinforced nylon or polypropylene, you know, polymer material with these little kind of flakes or kind of almost like fish scales that we're seeing here on the Condor. So that's something to consider that the, the grip on the Condor will surpass the grip on the S-Wing. Now, in contrast to that though, the S-Wing, it definitely has a fuller feel all the way through. It's a little bit thicker and then has a more natural curvature and kind of a flaring out near the bottom. Whereas there's just more of a standard, almost like broom handle design on the Condor. The S-Wing is gonna be uh, five and three quarters long. The handle on the Condor is gonna be five and a quarter long. So there's some difference there. And the naturalness of the S-Wing is a really nice, uh, it just feels a little bit more ergonomic when you're chopping and a little more natural with the striking motion. Now on the flip side though, you do have a lanyard hole down here that you could throw a 550 paracord through to just help with extra grip and leverage. Uh, you can do kind of a little custom thing I've done with my larger model that I've had longer is just do a paracord wrap around the neck of the handle and then use it there and that gives you a little bit extra traction because I did notice that I had to reset my grip um, about the same for both, mainly because this the S-Wing is a little slicker, so it wants to slide out of your hand a little faster, but the curvature and the flare at the bottom helps keep it in your hand, whereas the traction is good for the, for the Condor, but because it's just this natural broom handle, it tends to uh, want to fly out of your hand faster. So they kind of equal themselves out in their design, and it more comes down to which one connects with you more, which one do you feel is more natural to you. In durability levels, I would argue that the Condor over you know decades will be a more durable uh, system, but I mean, this these lacquered 
leather handles as long as you take care of them you know maybe in 10 years relacquer it or something or just you know maintain it well and not leave it out in the snow you know for three years on the wood pile it should last you decades and you can see that when you look some up on ebay and things like that without any issue so it's kind of a wash heavier traction nice paracord you know lanyard right there you can see the full tang coming all the way through at the bottom a uh, little bit slicker but better, better curvature on the s-wing and as we move up the hatchets, what I also discovered was with precision chops, uh, the necks were basically about the same. I was able to get similar grips on kind of mid midway point on the necks. The difference is that because of the slightly thinner face and head of the S-Wing, it's a little bit more precise and it doesn't take off as many uh, big chunks and you kind of regret the amount that you took off or you kind of have to swing a little lighter. Uh, the campsite, because it is a little bit thicker on the head, you have to put a little bit more uh, energy behind it. And then because of the slightly wider face, it when you do put the energy behind there, you're not as precise and it does often take out a little bit bigger chunks maybe than you would want. The S-Wing, I believe, is a little bit more of a precision tool with the finer chopping if you're trying to make like a spearhead or maybe you know some other sort of a notch or something like that uh, you'll find that the s-wing is slightly more precise the ergonomics were about the same uh, in that regard but the the heads proved to be a little bit more um, precision on the s-wing a little more brute on the campsite which is kind of what we're seeing and finally when i did go to actual carving if i was going to make a feather stick and help start a fire with these two tools what i found was that the campsite is actually more ergonomic the head design and neck design just makes it feel very comfortable and i didn't have to reset my hand i wasn't looking for a grip when i was making the the um, feather sticks. I did have to do that with the S-Wing. I was kind of fighting for a grip point that felt natural, that felt good, that wasn't cramping my hand as much. So I reset once or twice where I didn't have to do that with the campsite. On the flip side, again, things that we're seeing over and over again, because the uh, S-Wing has the thinner face, a little bit um, easier angle on the relief edge, that it actually makes the feather sticks easier than the campsite. You just have to put a little bit more pressure on the campsite. You have to hold it at a slightly different, slightly less natural angle just because of the larger convex uh, and thicker you know, um, edge geometry that it has. Now that it did a great job, the campsite did do a great job with the feather sticks, but uh, it's kind of, a, again, a wash. I'm able to get thinner ones quicker with the blade of the, the S-Wing, but the ergos aren't great. The ergos are really nice on the campsite, takes a little longer, you have to use a little bit more finesse and put a little bit more pressure behind the campsite. So uh, things just to consider, depending on how you use hatchets, what's more important to you, but data that I wanna share with you. Now the Pterosaur has a really well done sheath, particularly for its cheaper price compared to the knife itself, uh, the Mora. We're getting that polymer, we got two little drainage holes. It has an ambidextrous lashing point, meaning you can attach it for right or left with a good little leather loop right there, screwed in that you can slide down and rotate. And then you do get a little bit of jimping right here that you can kind of push off to give you some release for the blade and then snugly back into place. It's not gonna come out, doesn't rattle, not a lot of noise. So that's all really good zero issues with the sheath on the Condor. Now the Mora is gonna be very similar in that. You got very large drainage ports. Uh, you're gonna get ambidextrous belt attachment as well. Quiet, that's just the plastic, or the, it's probably a synthetic right there, slapping that. Uh, but ambidextrous as well, again, even ambidextrous with the sheath itself. That's not quite the case with the Condor but the Mora will come with a lot of other extra lashing options on top of just this little collar belt attachment. So you could lash it to gear, pals webbing, things like that. So that is an upgrade that you get a lot more lashing options than you will get with the Condor, but obviously you're paying more money for the Mora than you are the Condor. So things to consider, great sheet though on the Condor very very similar to what you get with the mora except more lashing options so we'll discuss sheaths here real quick on these hatchets now we're getting a kydex with lots of lashing points and a belt clip on the condor and it's a thin kydex it's not 0.8 uh i would say or 0.8 i can't remember how the measurements go i'd say it's thinner than that to be sure but it is a really good option i don't think there's really a need to upgrade it unless you want to go leather you can even swap that clip uh, and make it ambidextrous, which is nice. You got these two little thumb pull-offs. It is a little tricky to get off, but it does protect the blade really well and it's really secure in there. 
and then when it comes time to putting it back on you just kind of kind of play with it a little bit but it's nice and secure no rattle S-Wing is a pretty cruddy nylon. It just gets the job done. It's just a blade protector. It's got a two inch belt loop right there, but it's gonna ride kind of goofy on your belt. And then it's just got a button snap and then you pull the head all the way through while the sheath stays on your belt. So it's doable. I don't carry it on my belt that way. What I would recommend is going with a custom leather. I picked this up off of eBay for my larger S-Wing uh, of the um, Sportsman design. This is the 14 incher. Uh, this is from Badger Leather, I believe. I think I paid 20, $25 for it. Really good investment, very tough, durable. There's a lot of custom leather makers uh, out there that you can get leather sheaths for your S-Wings. And because of the very cheap price point on the S-Wing, even if you invest another, let's say $25, you're still looking at 60 bucks coming $25 cheaper than the Condor. Uh, so saving yourself money and getting a custom leather on your hatchet. All right, GT family, you've seen all the data. Here is my conclusion. You have $130 to spend. What combination am I going with based off of the data and information that we've seen in my rigorous testing, as well as just my usage, how I like to use my tools when I'm out in the backcountry camping, hiking, backpacking. Well, I actually wouldn't choose either. I would go with the larger S-Wing E24A version. It's slightly larger, still under two pounds, but it's gonna have a bigger head. It's gonna be as thick as the Condor, but have a slightly larger edge have about two more inches of length on it and it's going to cost me the exact same price at around $35. And I'm going to go with the stainless steel Sandvik version of the Mora Garberg because I prefer stainless steels when I can get them in this size range over high carbons, particularly when I'm in wet, colder environments like I am half the year here in the Rockies with snow, I can lay this blade down on the snow for a moment and not worry about any sort of rust and still has really good edge retention and still comes in between 80 and $90. So for 130 bucks, this would actually be the combination that I would buy. But of the gear tested today, for less than the $85 I would spend on the campsite hatchet alone, it's kind of a no-brainer. I would go with the Terrasaur and the S-Wing E14A. This is, I believe, an amazing combination for about $80. You're gonna get 1095 steel, 90 degree spine, good sheath, good ergonomics, and then you're getting a hatchet that still performs very well. It has a lifetime of use behind it since the early, I believe, 1900s when it was first originally produced and been used on more scouting trips than can be listed, and has toughness and durability behind it and is a great performer for that $35 price point, about $45 for the Pterosaur or even less sometimes. I mean. 80 bucks, this is a no brainer and is an amazing launch into a bushcraft set. And of everything that we saw, though this is a good performer, definitely will get the job done, the $85 that they want for this little hatchet just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, we're starting to look into, at that point, you can get some good Swedish made hatchets with, you know, full wood handles and, you know, really get some quality at 85 to hundred dollars. It just doesn't make sense to me. If they had pr priced this more around like 60 bucks, it would make more sense. And so this one, though it performs, it just doesn't make sense compared to the S wings that are already available for less than half the cost. You're getting the same or very close to the same performance and a splitting is a need for you, you just go with the slightly larger version and you're also gonna get more power in your chopping as well. Well, there you have it, folks. I really hope this video has been fun, entertaining, and enjoyable for you and giving you the data that you need, showing you what these blades can do, what these gear items and hatches can do for you, and whether or not these combinations are gonna make sense to you or if there's other gear just in general or some mix match version of what I did. And I look forward to hearing you guys' comments. If you have any questions that I maybe didn't answer in this video uh, or other questions in just in gear in general, I always look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and comments and hearing what you other guys have to say towards each other as well. So check out that other video popping up again. If you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to subscribe. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.